everyone, this is Kalpana here in this video. We are going to solve a differential equation from higher order linear differential equation. So let's get going. Problem. Solve d squared plus d plus 1 into y equals to sine 2x. Firstly, let's find the order and degree of the given differential equation. Identify the highest derivative in the differential equation. Here we are having d squared as a highest derivative. So our order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree. Degree is 1. Or just write the given differential equation as d square y plus dy plus y equals to sine 2x. We know that differential operator d is d by dx. Then d square will be d square by dx square. Right? So now we can write the given equation as Write d square y as d square y by dx square plus dy as dy by dx plus y equals to sine 2x. Here the highest derivative is d square y by dx square so our order will be 2. And the highest power of the highest derivative is our degree. Degree is 1. Solution. Given differential equation. d square plus d plus 1 into y equals to sine 2x. It is in operator form. f of d into y equals to q where f of d equals to d square plus d plus 1 and q equals to sine 2x. Now we need to find the general solution to the given equation which is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Here yc is a complementary function and yp is a particular integral. We can find yc using the roots of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation of the given non-homogeneous equation simply by taking RHS to 0 we will get the homogeneous equation to the given non-homogeneous equation. Okay. And we will find yp using 1 by f of d into q. So firstly let's find yc using the rules of the auxiliary equation of the homogeneous equation. The auxiliary equation of f of d into y equals to 0 is f of m equals to 0 where f of m equals to we have f of d d square plus d plus 1 right. So let's replace the differential operator by m so that we'll get f of m equals to m square plus m plus 1. Now, the auxiliary equation becomes m squared plus m plus 1 equals to 0. Now, we need to find roots to this equation, right? So, we'll use quartic formula minus b plus r minus square root of b square minus 4ac by 2a to find roots to the equation for a equals to 1, b equals to 1, c equals to 1. Just compare this equation with a m square plus b m square plus c, sorry b m plus c equals to 0. Then quotient of m square will be our value of a, quotient of m will be value of b and c constant. We'll get m equals to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 square minus 4 into 1 into 1 by 2 into 1 which is equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4, 1, 4 into 1 into 1 is 4 by 2 which is equal to minus 1 plus or minus square root of 1 minus 4 is minus 3 square root of minus 3 by 2 
is equal to minus 1 plus or minus. You can write square root of minus 3 as square root of minus 1 into 3. Again, we can split it as square root of minus 1 into square root of 3 by 2. Since we know that i equals to square root of minus 1, so we can replace the square root of minus 1 by i. Then we'll get minus 1 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. Or you can just write it as minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i into root 3 by 2. A pair of complex conjugate, right? Then m equals to minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i root 3 by 2. Are the roots to the auxiliary equation. We know that if a plus ib is a complex number, then its conjugate will be a minus ib. Likewise, if a minus ib is a complex number, then its conjugate will be a plus ib, right? So, if we have roots, complex conjugate roots a plus or minus ib, then we can write yc as e power ax into c1 cos dx plus another constant into sine dx, right? Now, our complementary function will be yc equals to e power for a equals to minus 1 by 2 into x plus or minus, no sorry, into constant cos b for b equals to root 3 by 2 into x plus c2 sine root 3 by 2 into x. Now we can write this as yc equals to e power minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sine x root 3 by 2. Now let's find particular integral. We got m equals to minus 1 by 2 plus or minus i into square root of 3 by 2, right? Which are the roots of f of m equals to 0, right? Which are a pair of complex conjugate. So, from this we got yc equals to e power minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sine x root 3 by 2. Okay. And now we can find particular integral. We can find particular integral using yp equals to 1 by f of d into q. We have f of d, d square plus d plus 1 into sine 2x. So, there is a 1 by f of d into sine ax form, right, for a equals to 2. We will find d square which is given by minus a square. Then for a equals to 2, we will get minus 2 square equals to minus 4. We should always remember that uh, denominator must be non-zero, right? So, let's see what happens if we replace g square by minus 4 in the denominator. Just take the denominator part and check by replacing g square by minus 4. Minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 plus d is equal to d minus 3, which is non-zero, right? Denominator is non-zero by replacing d squared by minus 4. So, we can get to replace d squared. Replace d squared by minus 2 squared which is equal to minus 4. 
then we will get 1 by minus 4 plus t plus 1 into sine 2x which is equal to 1 by minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 plus d into sine 2x which is equal to 1 by d minus 3 into sine 2x. Now we are having yp equals to 1 by d minus 3 into sine 2x, right? So in the denominator of yp, we are having d minus 3. If you replace this minus by plus, then you will get d plus 3, right? So let's multiply and divide d plus 3 to this fraction. 1 by d minus 3 into d plus 3 by d plus 3 into sine 2x. This becomes d plus 3 by d plus 3 into d minus 3 into sine 2x. Now the denominator is of a plus b into a minus b form, right? So we can write it as a square minus b square. We'll get d square minus 3 square in the denominator. Right? Again d square appears in the denominator. We can just write this as d plus 3 by d square minus 3 square is 9 into sine. Again, d square appears in the denominator. So, what we have to do? We have to check what happens if we replace d square by minus 4 in the denominator. The denominator must be non zero, right? What happens if the denominator becomes zero? We'll get something like this like d plus 3 by 0 into sine 2x. Anything by 0 is undefined. So, total term becomes undefined, right? So, we'll see what happens by replacing d square in the denominator. Take the denominator part, d square minus 9. Now, replace d square by minus 4 and see what you'll get. Minus 4 minus 9 is minus 13, which is non-zero. So, by replacing d square by minus 4, we'll get denominator non-zero. So, we can take to replace d square by minus 4. Then this becomes d plus 3 by minus 4 minus 9 into sine 2x which is equal to d plus 3 by minus 4 minus 9 is minus 13 into sine 2x. Again you can split this as 1 by minus 13 into d plus 3 into sine 2x. Now yp becomes, right, 1 by minus 13 as minus 1 by 13 into d sine 2x plus 3 sine 2x is equals to minus 1 by 13 into, here d is a differential operator, so write d by dx into sine 2x plus 3 sine 2x. Is equals to minus 1 by 13 into derivative of sine 2x is 2 cos 2x plus this term remains the same 3 sine 2x. Therefore yp equals to minus 1 by 13 into 2 cos 2x plus 3 sine now we can write the general equation, sorry, general solution. The general solution is given by y equals to yc plus yp. Then y equals to, we have yc, e power minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sine x root 3 by 2 
plus yp, we have yp plus minus 1 by 13 into 2 cos 2x plus 3 sin 2x or you can write it as y equals to e power minus x by 2 into c1 cos x root 3 by 2 plus c2 sin x root 3 by 2 plus into minus minus 1 by 13 into 2 cos 2x plus 3 sin 2x. This completes the problem. So we have seen a problem from higher order linear differential equation in this video. Hope you will understand. We will see you in the next video. Until then. Bye bye.